Hello, everybody. Reverend Dr. Reggie. <coughs> um, <coughs> thanks to a friend of mine in a discussion we had online, I realized that uh, I was going a little astray in my teachings. Um, you see, I, I needed my mission. Um, well, actually, God helped me in my mission, but it's my mission to teach the truth and gather the lost and to correct all the fallacies of mainstream religion as well as all the false religions out there. Um, my whole life uh, brought me to this point in time. Um, <coughs> and for a good while, uh, I, may, I was rather blunt in my teachings and what I have to say about what the truth is, and after all, that is the way you got to be. You got to be blunt about it because if you're not, no person can understand what the truth is. And a person can be, it's going to be open for everybody to, to uh, misinterpret it to, 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 to fit in their own minds how they perceive it. Um, and this conversation I had with my friend followed a story that I had heard of another minister who kind of had the same, went down the same route that I did. He got a call on to go into ministry and, and preach the truth. Um, and he had a certain vision. And a, cer uh, a certain way of acting out the mission and fulfilling his mission for God. But because of his fears he had of how people were going to persecute on him, and the fact that his church may not um, get, get the numbers he felt it should have, he helped the church build on a vision other than the one he was given by God. And after a little while doing that, he got a rude awakening and realized that he can't do that no more because he completely got off track of what of um, what God wanted him to do. And at that point, he, he tried changing the whole vision of the whole entire church and, and, and tried driving the church down the correct path the way he, he, he thought he was directed by God. And he wound up getting kicked out of his own church. <clears throat> and now uh, he still ministers on the side. Uh, I believe he, he said that he has an online church at the moment and a small congregation, which really isn't that much different from uh, my ministry at the moment. I think that's a bigger online congregation than I do uh, offline. Um, the only difference is he's been around for a while, can have his reputation, and obviously, as you all know, Spiritual Messiah Ministries is a rather new ministry. Um, but between hearing his story of what happened to him, and now he's trying to correct himself, uh, and immediately following that is when I had this conversation with my friend online, who kind of forced me to come to the realization that over the past couple of months I've been slipping off of the missions that performed me by God. Uh, so, here I am trying to get back on, on the right path. And I do thank my friend for, help, for helping me out with this and that story with my, from that other minister. Uh, that's how me realize where I was going, and if I continued on that path, what would eventually wind up happening to this ministry. Um, and I'm going to say from, you know, from day one of this ministry, that this ministry came about, even before the ministry was founded, before I founded the ministry, and well before I got my uh, clinical ordination and my uh, divinity degree, I already started preaching. And back up in New York, I did have, you know, a small congregation going. Uh, can I, I actually had people coming to where I worked 
not to purchase my, my items, but to stand off to the side and hear me preach. And then obviously I also had the masses that had to argue with everything I said and um, had all kinds of verbal attacks against me. <coughs> and I'm going to say that that happening now down here in Florida uh, is probably what caused me to do this, to do what I started doing as far as being less blunt about the message and going off track a little bit. Um, now I was reviewing some old articles and sermons that I had done, and I have been getting, you know, less and less and less blunt and forceful with the message. And I can't really say that that stopped the attacks against me, because it really hasn't. Um, and which I guess is a good thing in a way, because that just means that I have a bigger, um, a, a bigger reach than what I, what I had originally thought that I had, which is, which is a good thing. Um, the, the, the truth does need to get out there, and if people are hitting on me and, and verbally attacking me, that means they have, that they have to have hurt my, uh, one of my sermons, or read one of, one of the articles up on uh, the website, um, which means that the seed is being planted. Now, if the child of God can go eventually come around and come into the light and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, and if they're not, well, we all know what's going to happen with that. So anyways, uh, to get try to get myself and back on track and his ministry back on track, I'm gonna try to get back into preaching. <coughs> I'm gonna try to get back into preaching the way I was preaching when I had first started this ministry almost a year ago, <coughs> and the way I was preaching back up in New York <coughs> uh, before I had received my ordination. <coughs> Whether or not it has the same effect that it does that uh, that it has on you or anybody else, the same way that it did those up in New York is debatable. But here again, if you have ears to hear and the eyes to see, you will hear God's message. You will hear the truth, and you will see that it is indeed the truth. So, I'm going to ask all of you to please, when you watch these videos in this series, to please have an open mind. Understand that I do not want you to take anything I say and believe it to be the truth simply because I'm saying it. I want you to take everything I say and question it. Whether you question me and um, I, can you allow me to, to explain it more in detail to you, or you question it of others, or you uh, uh, punch in certain keywords of the particular topic into a search engine such as Google or, or Bing or you know whatever other search engines might be out there, and try to look up the information for yourself. My, can I want you to do your due diligence. I want you to see that what I'm going to be saying in these videos is the truth. Um, I want you to believe, that, believe it's the truth because you see it to be the truth. Not, not because, you know, there's a minister sitting before you and therefore what he says must be true. That's not how it's supposed to be because having that mindset is how so many Western Christians have allowed themselves to fall for the lies and deception that is of, what, of the world today. And which is why I personally feel Christianity can be such on a, on a, a decline in the West, in, uh, particularly in a few of the European nations, such as uh, England and Germany. And now we're seeing a growing decline here in America. And I'm going to blame that on the fact that a lot of ministers are being taught half-truths and all lies, in, in the seminaries, 
and they're in turn teaching half truths and all lies to their congregations, and can be because that they're a minister, the masses <laughs> seem to feel, well, because they're a minister, they're a man of God, they must know what they're talking about, and therefore that is indeed the truth, and that's the mindset that they allow themselves to have, <clears throat> which is not what we're supposed to do. Jesus <laughs> told us that he wants everybody to ask questions. He wants everybody <clears throat> to understand the truth for the, what the truth is, not for what... Uh, uh, a regular ordinary person or a spawn of Satan might say it is. We're not supposed to follow mere men. We're supposed to follow the one true God. And if the man of God can't confirm that what he knows is of the truth, or if somebody who is um, listening to somebody who's portraying himself to be a, a man of God, if that person doesn't now take that, that, that minister's words, and, and do their own due diligence to look it up to, to confirm that it's either right or wrong. That person is now allowing themselves to be deceived and lied to. I mean, there, there are a few of us out there who are preaching the truth, but the fact of the matter is, the majority of us in, in the West are preaching lies. 97% uh, of the Christian ministers are, are <laughs> preaching half-truths and all lies. They are not preaching what's in this book. This book is God's Word. It is not to be changed. It is not to be altered. And this book is actually quite easy to understand. Um, but the way they teach it is how people get the misconception that the Bible is hard to understand. You see, the thing is, they don't want you to understand the truth. They don't want you to know the truth. The spawn of Satan want you to, want you to, 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 to not, not know because if the if there's too much light being shed into the darkness, what happens? <laughs> there's gonna be no more, no more darkness. Take away, take away the darkness. You're taking away the, the, um, the, the power of Satan. And you have the equivalent of, you know, the flame on a lighter in a dark room as opposed to a hundred watt light bulb. Obviously, which one's gonna have more power over that darkness? Naturally, the 100 watt light bulb is going to shine more light into darkness and remove that much more darkness than the flame on a lighter would. And right now, I am that lighter in the room of darkness trying to get to the brightness of the 100 watt light bulb. But in order to do that, not only do I got to um, form a coalition, which I'm in the process of doing, with other ministers from around the world that are, that are preaching the truth, but I also need to, need to stay true to Jesus Christ and can stay true to the calling that I have from Jesus Christ and preach the truth to the people and, and bring the lost back to God. And as those, those, those lost come back to God, and they realize the truth, and then they in turn go out there and start preaching the truth, the flame will get will get ever so bigger, so uh, and more powerful, and 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 will eventually reach that the ultimate brightness, where there just won't be any more room for darkness to flourish, and it's born to Satan. No one want that. Satan himself doesn't want that. Which is why any bearers of the truth and of the light are going to be attacked in the manner that many of us have been getting attacked. Um, and it's, been, it hasn't, it's something that's been going on for a long time. Uh, if you read through the Bible, you can see that all the prophets were attacked all throughout history for preaching the truth. And there was a lot of more modern uh, ministers throughout the past couple hundred years that were teaching the truth and they wound up being killed um, or heavily persecuted against because of the fact that they're, pre that they're preaching the truth. And then you have other ministers that, can, that can, they're 
preaching half truths and all lies for 20, 30, 40 years in whatever particular church it might be that they're, that they're ministering in before they finally realize what the truth is and they now either leave the church altogether because they don't know how to handle the fact that, that they have been lying to the people for the past 30, 40 years or they want them being excommunicated from their church that they're ministering in because they try to now preach the truth which is going to naturally go against the doctrine of that particular church. Um, and the King James Version Bible is, a matter of fact, 90% word for word accurate to the original scriptures, which is why it is being taught, the way it's being taught nowadays, trying to make everybody have this, this perception that. The King James Bible is a, is, is a hard under uh, a hard Bible to understand, a hard Bible to read. So you got to go out there and then buy one of these newer, more modern translations because they're e an easier read. When, as a matter of fact, they are not. Um, a lot of phrases and terminology <coughs> that we use to this day can be found right here in this Bible, in the King James Bible. Now, written in 1611. Right. A lot of that terminology was, it was translated originally in the 1500s uh, as the Tyndale Bible. That was the 100% word for word translated Bible, the Tyndale Bible. And in 1611, it was reformatted by King James. And they were given all these commands in all to change different wordings, and his people didn't. And they refused. They only changed certain things. So this Bible here is still close to 90% accuracy rate word for word translation to the original text. So the fact of the matter is that we're still using terminology and phrases that were translated word for word from the original text. And that just goes to show that we are in fact still using the same word, the same terminology that God did thousands and thousands of years ago when we were first put here. <clears throat> Nothing has changed. Which means in all actuality, if you can separate yourself from the reality that, that Satan is creating around you and step into the bigger pitch, step out of the box of Satan and open your mind up to the reality of God you know, and open your heart up to the Spirit of Christ, you will realize that the King James Version Bible really isn't that hard to read at all or understand. Um, and if you take a really close look at a lot of the modern translations, particularly the New International Version, which uh, is a very popular version of the Bible, there's actually entire verses taken out. Where it literally would read, you know, it'll show the book, chapter, and then it'll literally go, verse 1, verse 3, what happened to verse 2? But that's how it literally will be read. The verse is actually removed from the Bible. Uh, and there, it, there's other translations where they literally change the entire verse. Uh, and obviously by changing every word of the verse, changing the meaning of the verse. Um, and then there's other translations that add verses to the Bible. Uh, then there, there's the New King James Version, which is not authorized King James Bible. It's an imitation. It's not a true King James. With New King James, which is not a true King James, as well as New International Version, as well as most of the modern translated Bibles, not only do they take out verses, add in verses, can reword verses of the Bible, can they take the deity out of Jesus Christ, making him look like he was nothing more than a mere man, when he was, uh, in fact, man as well as God. As it states in the true Bible, he is the Son of God. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He can't be the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the Son of God, if you're being portrayed as only a mere man. So the Jesus Christ of a lot of the newer Bibles is not the Jesus Christ of the true Bible, 
Kmet for the Jesus Christ of the newer translations are not, is not the Jesus Christ of true Christianity or when I should say of the true faith of the true of, of true Judaism or uh, true of the true Israelites. Um, and there's a lot of questions that are being raised about the Bible because a lot of scripture has been removed over the over the hundreds of the years. Um, and certain things are have been kept in, but there's been a lot that's been removed. And it's extremely hard to find, but it is out there. And it actually raises a lot of questions that a lot of ministers and a lot of uh, uh, allegedly devout Christians can't answer. Um, they'll give you uh, answers like, well, that that's the way God made it, that's the way it is, that's just the way it is. You know, pretty much meaningless answers, just to try to... Um, quiet you up about everything. So in this series of videos what I'm going to attempt to do is to answer the unanswered questions and explain everything to everybody. Um, and, and now obviously the best place to start is in the very beginning. So I'm going to be starting with the book of Genesis and finishing with the book of Revelation in that order. And depending on if the context of each part of the Bible and the amount of questions in each part of the Bible will depend on how much of that particular part of the Bible I'm going to cover for a video. Uh, for example, the book of Genesis alone has well over 50 chapters. So... The fact that Genesis alone has 50 chapters, <clears throat> now right there, um, it's going to take me a while, it's going to take a good couple of videos to get through the book of Genesis. So I'm going to have to explain everything. Um, and then the fact that the Genesis is one of the most questioned books in the Bible next to Revelation. <clears throat> It's gonna, it's gonna take me a while to get through. And uh, some parts I might be able to do, I remember to cover an entire chapter per video, or a number of chapters per video. Can other parts of the Bible can might only be a verse or two can I be explaining. It depends on the context of that, per, of that piece of scripture that I'm covering, and the amount of questions that revolve around it, and what piece of the truth is going to be explained to help you understand that part of the scripture. Um, and it just really isn't, you know, a simple thing where, you know, for example, can you ask me, well, you want to go to the store down the road for me? Okay, fine, that's, that's easy. You know, take me a couple of sentences to tell you from, where, from wherever you may be how to get to that store. It isn't that simple. Um, it's going to take me a couple of minutes to explain everything in enough detail where you can actually comprehend what I'm saying and have enough un enough uh, information where you can add now go after watching my video and look up the information for yourself to find it for yourself. So I don't want you to hear me say it, and because I said it, you're not even going to see it to be truth. I want you to go out and believe it to be the truth because you did your own due diligence and you see it to be the truth. So, and please watch all the videos of this series in order. Um, if you skip just one video, chances are, whatever video you're watching, you're going to have questions that are going to be raised that will have an answer in the video prior. So please watch all the videos to the series in order as I go along. <coughs> Do your own due diligence following the videos on whatever I said. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me and ask me your questions. I will answer all your questions. 
And as far as anybody who's going to be watching my videos for the simple fact of attacking what I say, I'm going to ask you to please keep your comments to yourselves. Can I take five minutes of your time to go to look up what I'm, what I'm telling you? Because if you're going to give me 30 minutes to watch my videos, I believe you can also take an additional five minutes to hop on the internet or go down to the library and look up what I'm saying so you can see it for yourself right in front of your face from uh, more historical as well as biblical sources other than myself. And there's no point in debating the truth with me if you're not going to do the diligence yourself and have a leg to stand on. So, that being said, I will see you in part one of Genesis filled in. God bless.